Good morning, St. Francis. It is March the 15th, 2021, the Ides of March. Uh, it is the Monday of the fourth week of Lent, the 23rd day of Lent. Coming to you from an undisclosed location, although I can show you that there is snow, snow where I am, and it is very chilly here this morning. Um, going uh, halfway, we're, we're past the halfway mark in, in Lent. Uh, we are moving closer and closer uh, to the Paschal Triduum and the celebration of the Easter season. And so we get an important, wonderful glimpse of really what Lent is all about in the first reading and the gospel today. The first reading from Isaiah needs to be, again, understood carefully because Jesus begins, or God begins, by speaking about a new heavens and a new earth uh, where the past will be no longer remembered. And a lot of times we can take a look at that and say that, well, what we have now will be wiped away and something better take its place because it is so bad and awful and terrible. Again, that would mean that God made a mistake at the beginning and that God has to begin again, which God cannot do because God does not make mistakes. So uh, we have to look at it as to what else is being said in Isaiah. And that is what kind of past will a past of suffering, of woe, of pain, of terror, of anxiety, of sadness, of all those kinds of things that undo humanity and make us what we are not. All of that is wiped away and a new heaven and new earth appear, one that is filled with wholeness and goodness and life and life for all. A glimpse of that is given today uh, in today's gospel from John, where the second of the signs in John's gospel is given, not uh, in, in a different way than it is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it is a Roman official, a centurion and his servant that Jesus uh, that, that goes to Jesus and Jesus heals uh, with that request, uh, you know, don't come under my roof, but just say the word and, and, and everything will be done as you say that it will be done. It's not a centurion. It is a Roman, it is a uh, Galilean official, a court official of the court of Herod Antipas. Uh, who was king at the time of Jesus in, in Galilee. And it is not a servant, but his son who was sick. And again, there's nothing about not coming under my roof or anything else like that, but it is the sense in which the man's faith, uh, the man's trust that Jesus can do what he can do, heals his son. And again, life is brought back to a household uh, that was experiencing sadness and woe and suffering. Again, it is belief that God can make a new heavens and a new earth where there is no more pain, no more sadness, no more fear, no more suffering. It is belief that allows, you know, for that to take place. And a reminder again, that Lent is meant to lead to Easter, to life abundant, a life without fear of death, a life without, a life without fear of separation, a life without distance between each other and between God, a life that is lived in its fullness. Lent does just not end in itself with even more anxiety and woe, did we do enough so that God can forgive us of our sins? Because that's not what it's about. It's about remembering what God can do, what Christ can do to believe that all of that is possible. One more year we are given again to try to move a bit deeper into this belief that God can do what God says God will do. Again, to the extent that we do believe in that, miracles do happen. The more though that we distrust in that, again, we are put, we are put back where we were, which is not a good place to begin with, to begin, in, in, to, to begin with. Let us try to trust a bit more in what God has to say in these last weeks of Lent, that God will never ever go back on his promises, but that God will fulfill what God intends. May the Lord give you peace.